And good afternoon. We're on the air. This is this is Pastor Mike along with my co-host Brad Carter and you're listening to Voices from Home, a voice for the voiceless. We uh, talk about homelessness, uh, uh, issues surrounding the homelessness issue. Today we're going to be calling in just a few moments Dr. Robert Marvin who's going to join us on the air and answer questions about Volusia Safe Harbor, our uh, planned shelter for Volusia County and uh, and also um, talk about touch on a couple of a uh, couple of other yeah, issues uh, Brad you want to go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and and uh, say a few words hi Mike I'm Brad Carter I'm the co-host of this show hopefully we can have um, Dr. Bob Lamar call in in a few moments is he calling in no he just texted me okay we're gonna call him and just you know we might as well get started with that Okay, for, uh, for those who are listening, uh, this is uh, Voices from Home, a voice for the voices. This is, this is a call-in program. You're welcome to call in on uh, 1380 The Cat. Uh, the uh, studio line is 523-1380, 523-1380. And we are, um, uh, we are uh, going to be uh, talking today about a number of issues, uh, most certainly about the funding challenges with regard to Volusia Safe Harbor and uh, the cities, the surrounding cities' involvement, the county's involvement, and, and so on. So, Do you want to um, chop into the chief of police while you wait for Dr. Uh No, I, I want to talk about a, a little bit about criminalization of the homeless, and, and we have a, uh, you know, we have an expert on the line. So, uh, Brad, why don't you tell, uh, while we're calling Dr. Marvin, tell a little bit about Home of Daytona Beach, your origins, and a little bit of background of your organization. Would that be okay? Yeah, I guess so, Mike. Um, home of Daytona Beach, my but Voices from Home is a subsidiary of Home of Daytona Beach. Um, we are a nonprofit organization that was started about five years ago to help the homeless. Um, we consist of members that are homeless and, and others. That's what HOME stands for, it's Homeless and Others for Meaningful Exchange. Um, I think it's the only organization of its type in maybe the United States, I don't know. I mean, Mike's a member, Pete John's a member. Um, we're open to the public, anyone who wants to join can join. Studio and that's about it. We've done, we've done some good work, I think, Mike. Uh, yeah, okay, well, let's talk about the sleeping ordinance a little bit. Uh, uh, William Bradford Carter et al. and 33 other defendants were responsible for uh, overturn Judge Schumann's ruling, uh, overturning the sleep sleeping ordinance in 2012. Right. And actually, when we, saw, when we saw Judge Schumann at the Volusia Safe Harbor Working Committee, uh, she said, uh, uh, you know, she was surprised that the city did not appeal her decision. And she says, what am I, the Supreme Court? And the ruling was just so strong and so... They didn't have a leg to stand on, they knew it. No, they really didn't. So. You, can't, you can't arrest people for sleeping. You can't arrest people for um, doing a bodily function that is necessary to survive. Yeah, that's true. And although they do it anyway in the park, they get around it by calling it misuse of park property, but you can't do it. It's never worked anywhere. It's it's dry. So right now we're uh, trying to, to reach Dr. Robert Marbit. Uh, as far as uh, as far as recently in um, recent, okay, I think we got him on the line here. I was shocked that homeless people couldn't check out my material. Oh, that's true. I told you, sir. That's true. Okay, uh, we're on the air with Dr. Robert Marbit. Hello, Robert. How are you doing, Dr. Marbit? This is. Yeah, and uh, we thank you for being with us today. Uh, uh, we are uh, excited that we have a, an opportunity to talk about a, uh, an issue that's so topical. Uh, even today, the Daytona Beach News Journal had a, uh, an yet another editorial about, uh, about the planned shelter, and uh, there was uh, some talk about how the, the homeless are gathering in the parks and how uh, it's just, uh, you know, of course, you know, the, the thrust of the business community is that the homeless are just screwing everything up, you know, as always, those, those doggone homeless people. So anyway, I want, you to, uh, I want you to tell us a little bit about how you got involved uh, in Volusia County and uh, who brought you in and, and where the status of it. Kind, kind of give us a broad overview and then we'll dig into some I'll, of the... I would like to know how you got involved in homelessness, period. Thank you. 
prime numbers or scalable numbers, but uh, we have on that 37 acres basically four campuses. We have a veteran campus, we have a family and children campus, we have a, a single adult uh, transformational campus, and then we have a prospect sport yard. And uh, you know, given nine, about 2,300 people are on campus between all those programs. Wow, that's a big place, Bob. Um, now, isn't it true that County Volusia County uh, County Manager Jim Deneen had visited Haven for Hope, uh, you know, before the contract started? Is that correct? I, I don't know that uh, one way or the other. I don't remember. I, I wasn't there. Or I didn't facilitate any tour. I did have a meeting with some police officers from San Antonio and some other agencies that were involved in the project. But Dr. Mullen, how did you get involved with Volusia County? Okay, so bring it. So bringing us up to speed for our listeners. Uh, back in uh, March of last year, you were tasked with doing a homelessness uh, gaps analysis, and uh, you went you went homeless all over the county. That's correct. Yeah, there you go. I said there he is. Okay, but you you do a good you do a good version of a homeless person. I wish I had seen him as a homeless person. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was a little bit disheveled, but uh, but anyway, uh, I didn't blow his cover. So uh, so so anyway, the uh, the the homelessness uh, gaps analysis was presented in October of last year, and then. Uh, and then you were hired to um, actually get the you know get the movement going to uh, you know to, to get us a shelter here and we're what six months into it and we have a governance structure and a, and a budget and I was very impressed with you know the way things that were presented and uh, you know and and now uh, I have always said that the devil's in the details. Well, and before we bite off that, I'd like to ask Dr. Barnbright a question: What do you think of the point in time count? So much emphasis um, is, is in that. Yeah, I think point in time counts, and, and, and for the listeners who don't know, that is a federally required program, and it's varied over the last couple of decades, uh, whether it's every year or a full one, one year and a part one, but it's done for a cut. And it, even, I think you read, I, I think it's about five years ago, cuts preamble, when 14 pages say why the point in time made it so bad,
Can I can I tell you what I think it is? I think it's okay. I think it's used as a tool to fund organizations that get paid money. And, and that, to some extent, is true. And, and that certainly over time, in the last five or six years, has been Yeah, I think it's totally inaccurate. Well, you used uh, some uh, some first appearance information, I believe, from Judge Schumann's court. Yeah, and we did. And we did. We ran a little bit of the meeting, and we did that. 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 Now, Dr. Marvin, in analyzing these data points, uh, do, I guess you uh, have some sort of uh, methodology for arri arriving at your recommendation that Volusia County build a 250-bed shelter, is that correct? Well, what I think it, what I think it leads me somewhere between 200 and 250, or maybe you build it for 250, you restore the building, you build it for 200,
Do you think that you can um, house families with single homeless men? Because I know they do that in Miami. Do you think they can do that? Surprised, Dr. Mother. I went to the um, strategy meeting the other um, last month, I guess, and I was really surprised about the public participation that was allowed and how everyone was allowed to comment and participate. Um, there's been a lot of talk about how this is your plan and that you're going to just you know, carbon copy what you did in Pinellas County, but that's not true, is it? I thought Pastor Mike was actually running the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. copy of Pinellas. That's what I keep on telling people. It really is a community project yeah. if people get involved. 
And, and Dr. Marbert, uh, without getting too far in the weeds with specifics, I know that you know you're going to be able to you know your 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 style is to you know Q and A until you drop. Okay, at these meetings, and and that's a you know and that's a good you know that's a real good thing. Now, one of the things that I remember that you said that uh, they said what that every every city you go into everybody tries to tell you well Dr. Marvin you don't understand our our locality is different you know <laughs> and you always come back and say no it's not all that different than, than other places that you worked in all right so Well, you know, uh, Dr. Marbet, we, uh, you know, we've been through this now. Uh, well, I mean, your first presentation in front of the city commission was in January of last year. So, so now we're, you know, the people that are intimately involved in the process, Brad, myself, Halifax Urban Ministries, Father Phil, and so on, we're, we're all up to speed. But I think what everybody wants to hear from you uh, today is how can this be sold to 16 cities, all right, to raise... Uh, eight million dollars it would be a 1.6 million annual budget uh, times five years so uh, and we've already had a couple of cities that have you know just outrightly outright hostility towards you know the funding scheme you know it, is this something that can be sold here in Volusia and can you speak to your experience in other in other localities You don't have to have, Dr. Marbury, you don't have to have all 16 cities. You just have to have enough to cover the annual operating company. Yeah, and you, you need 1.6 million a year. And you, do you want all the cities? Absolutely. 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 Absolut
When you have cities so close together, like you know Daytona and Ormond and Port Orange and Holly Hill, I don't see how anyone can say they don't have a homeless problem in the city. I mean, they're so close. Say, John. Can you tell me, um, a little, like I've heard a lot of people who, there's a lot of misinformation about Volusia Safe Harbor, and I've heard, a match, matter of fact, a member of the COC board called Volusia Safe Harbor a, a box. Can you ex, um, elaborate on some of the um, services that we provide at Volusia Safe Harbor? Yeah. It's not going to be a box. I guess this is, my, my point is, Dr. Marvin, excuse me, is that this is what Volusia Safe Harbor is all about. It's not about getting the homeless out of the city of Daytona Beach, putting them in a box and warehousing them somewhere. It's about helping them get back on their feet.
You know, I've been homeless, I was homeless for five years, and um, I've, you know, had to do a lot of self-examination of why I was homeless, and I find out that a lot of homeless individuals suffer from a very low self-esteem and very low self-confidence, and I think that might be one of the root causes of homelessness. individuals I've met, I think that's one common you know, denominator. They all have low self-esteem and self-confidence. Okay, Dr. Marbet, uh, let me take a moment and invite our listeners to call in with uh, questions. That would be 523-1380, 523-1380. We're speaking with Dr. Robert Marbet, our homeless consultant par excellence, who's uh, helping us to move a shelter initiative forward in Volusia County. And you're listening to Voices from Home with Brad Carter and Pastor Mike. Um, Dr. Marbit, let me, uh, you know, let me tell the listeners that, uh, you know, what's next because we were, uh, you, you were able to get, gain a seat at the table or on the outer row anyway at the, at the, uh, at the, uh, uh committee meeting. <laughs> <laughs> there is no outer row, is there? <laughs> There's no outer row. You can't row. stop okay. Mike, Pastor Mike from talking. That's <laughs> no. Sure. You can put well, that aside. Okay, right? okay. That's not stop. All right, Brad, I pay, Brad, 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 I paid for this microphone, okay? All right, here. <laughs> uh, all right, Ronald Reagan. Anyway, uh, Dr. Marvin, okay, the, the, my understanding is that the, the next meeting will be uh, going over the cap construction, but capital construction budget that's going to be uh, presented by Bill Chapin, and then we're going to have our road show uh, of, of going to uh, doing three um, quasi-town hall symposiums where we're going to invite the business community, the residents, and the politicians you know, to come to a location and it's going to be a presentation and, and then Q&A. Is that correct? Does that concern you a little bit? Because that concerns me a little bit because the only people that tend to come to these meetings are people who oppose. I mean, you might, you might have, you know, 80% you know, the population that agree with what you're doing, and the, but the only people that come to these meetings are people who oppose what you're trying to do.
that's what I can't, I can't understand, Dr. Mar, but when I talk to the people who work in social service, you know, in the COC and, and the Salvation Army, and they oppose a homeless shelter for single homeless men and women, I don't understand how they can stand there and say that it's not a good idea or isn't helpful. Well, isn't it because, Dr. Marbert, that uh, the chronically homeless single uh, single men, street people, are the least sympathetic uh, subpopulation of the homeless? Is that correct? Yeah. the COC would oppose that or any, any social service agency? Well, Yeah, we've got we've got some fiefdoms around here. Do you think the federal government, HUD, has given up on single homeless individuals without a diagnosis of them?
What do you think about the ever-growing definition of homelessness? Well, I was involved, and I, I was critical of the federal government, that at one point in time, they were going to Well, you know, Dr. Marbut, you're well aware that I'm pretty impatient about this this process because I want, you know, I want to alleviate the hardships and the suffering on the on the uh, street right now. So now I'm going to move into an area where Brad and I, you know, have ha have a little bit of difference of opinion. But I want you to try as much as you can without, you know, without spinning, uh, to give us a realistic timeline. Of, of where we are. I know we got a month till the cap construction budget. We got a couple of months for these town, town halls. Then you're going to formally approach the city councils, and then they have to put it into their to their budget request for I believe the 2017-2018 budget process. So you know, aren't we aren't, aren't we talking about you know a fairly lengthy process? Or can you speak to that? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. 2016, 2017. That was da that was Dallas, wasn't it? Okay, well, uh, I'm saying, uh, he's saying 18 months, I'm saying well, 24 months before the first head is ready to put in the first bed. Dr. Marvin, I was talking to somebody who was, in, you know, he's involved in the project, and um, this is where me and Mike disagree again. He says 24 months. But this person said that if everything goes well, we could break ground in eight months. To start After building. you get the land. Start building. Is that is that true?
That'd be awesome. Okay, well, we're talking permitting, we're talking new construction, we're talking uh, general contractor selection, we're, we're talking about staffing. Uh, you know, I, for, forgive me for being pragmatic about this process. You know, uh, Brad will accuse me of trying to push my initiative. We're talking eight months, right, Dr. Marvin? <laughs> no. No. That was an existing bid? That was an existing building, right? You know, one of the big one of the big things about the shelter proposal is the medical claim. You know, I think a lot of homeless individuals die from illnesses that are easily curable because they don't get treated. Absolutely. Yeah, but that's just and, and, and what's sad about that, if you can get good coverage, you can get good care, uh, not only do you help the homeless individuals reduce the, the deaths that occur, but the loss of drive the amount of people that they produce. This is where, if you don't like this because it's a humanitarian thing, or if you think that it's too liberal, you should be in for it because you're going to serve people dramatically reduce the cost uh, of the local emergency care system and reduce the overload. Because sadly, homeless people don't get their primary care at the most expensive level of that cooperation in the emergency room that they work in. And so, it, it, that's why we need the common sense on the right and the common sense on the left. Yeah, I'm going to stroke your ego a little bit. Um, <laughs> but you said something at the meeting that I thought was really um, profound and, and wise. Is that skin cancer is, is huge among homeless individuals. Absolutely. Because you're on the street and you're Yeah. And it's easily curable. And if you had a medical clinic, you could take care of it. Absolutely. That's why Bruce... That's so preventable. That's why Bruce... That's why Blue Safe Harbor is more than a box. Well, so that's what I'm well Brad, let me, let, me, you know, let me interject here, okay? The, let me talk about, briefly, before we have to let Dr. Marvin go and then kick us out of the studio. Uh, I have an initiative called Shelter Can't Wait. It calls for a 12-month conditional uh, special use permit to put up a temporary structure on the order of a disaster recovery uh, building like they would have after a hurricane and put uh, put a hundred uh, fifty bunk beds or a hundred cots and so on and that's on your email Dr. Marvin I don't know that you have had a chance to peruse it but you know that's the Volusia Safe Harbor initiative is going to take its course and it's going to take as long as it takes so I believe that you know that the homeless population uh, in, in the immediate core district of Daytona Beach, there's 300 people on the street. I believe that we should take 100 people who are special needs and who are the, the hardest cases, that are very vulnerable on the street, They're, we're the most likely to lose. Okay, get them off the uh, sleeping in concrete and alleyways and, and under bushes and get them into a, uh, a safe, secure environment and, and then we can segue into Volusia Safe Harbor and uh, and that's my plan. I mean, what do you think? If we get the county to donate the land, um, we could put something up temporarily. 
Is well, it possible to get the county to donate the land? Like not without the funding commitment. Without the funding commitment. No. First. No, it's contingent yeah, upon I that. And the funding, com the funding commitments have to go through the budgetary process in the individual cities. That's what I'm trying to tell Brad. Agreed, agreed. So, you know, I, I don't, we've got five minutes, okay, so uh, uh, Dr. Marbit, okay, uh, you know, the, the last thing that we want to talk about, and this has been going round and round and round in, in this city, uh, you know, would you speak to, you know, the problem of, of over-aggressive uh, enforcement of ordinances that are that are just strictly targeting the homeless and, and you know how they're just a waste of time. The chief of police called the homeless um, animals, wild animals. Studies have shown Bologna sandwiches. Well, I'm going to say I'm going to say I'm going to say that I really appreciate you and what the job that you're doing and you know and I, I I wish you all the best and I'm going to let Mike have the last word but I just want to say that don't you think that the police um, when they dehumanize homeless individuals that that makes it easier for the general community to dehumanize them? There you go. Okay, Bob. You know I'm going to pin you down on this one. Uh, you, you know, you your your whole uh, you know spiel to cities that you go to is that that uh, street feedings are, are very enabling and they avoid getting people into 24/7 programs. So, uh, in the absence of 24/7 programs, uh, you know, isn't it okay to feed the hungry? Thank you. 
Great, until there's three hots in a cot, not a, we're going to be making sandwiches. Not a battle you want to fight, Dr. Marbert. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Marbert, we, we, we've really enjoyed having you as a guest, okay? You know, I, you know I'm a, a, a big fan. I just won it yesterday, so that, that's where we... I won it yesterday, too, so I Okay, Dr. Marbert, you. take care. Okay. All right. We're just uh, finishing up Voices from Home with Brad Carter and Pastor Mike. Uh, uh, listen in uh, Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Uh, and hear all about uh, different solutions for the homelessness problem. God bless and we're clear. That was a good show. I kept you in check. <laughs>